Welcome everybody and uh, the scenery looks a little different to usual doesn't it? Uh, so a few things to go through. Number one, my apologies to all of you for my radio silence over the last week. As you can see, I'm not around. Um, been on holiday, a bit of downtime with the family, so that's why I've not been around. Uh, number two, no access to the internet pretty much. Uh, it's been, I don't know, like five minutes worth of access I managed to get online, so uh, Perhaps that's a good thing, it's holiday isn't it, at the end of the day. Um, so I managed to see a few um, comments about the swirl flap delete, that's interesting. Let's talk about that and that's what today's video is going to be about. Okay, so let's talk about swirl flaps and why they're there, what, what do they do? Hmm? So to do that we really need to talk about fluid dynamics, okay, so don't let that put you off. Uh, and at this point, by the way, I've never really talked about combustion theory and things like this before. It's not really something I've done. So if you think it's useless, tell me. If you think you liked it, tell me, whatever. But uh, so let's talk about it. So when we talk about fluid dynamics, um, we're not talking about liquids, really. When we say fluids, it can mean gases and liquids. So in this, in, in this instance, we're talking about combustion air on the way in through the intake manifold. So when you look at uh, the intake manifold on the N57, let's just talk about my engine. Um, the N57, you can see there are two intake ports per cylinder and each one, they look different. There's one that's circular and one which is slightly rectangular shaped. Now the circular one has the swirl flap so that it can shut like a butterfly valve. And the other one is open all the way. It just has a little spindle running through it to control all of the swirl flaps. So. The idea behind swirl flaps is at lower RPM, when the intake air isn't rushing in at speed into the cylinders. So think about uh, the airflow trickling in gently through the intake ports. If they close off the one side, so bear in mind there's two valves, there's two valves that are gonna open and uh, let the intake air come in at the same time. If the butterfly valve to one is shut off, or most of the way shut off so that very little airflow is going through that port. All of the air is directed through the slightly rectangular shaped one, which means that when it hits the top of the cylinder inlet, it's gonna curl round in a cylindrical fashion. And that's where the swirl part of it comes from. It's gonna bring the intake air swirling round at a lower velocity into the cylinder. If you had them both open, just like a traditional engine with no swirl flaps, you get what's called tumble, when the intake air comes straight in and it, and it curls into the cylinder this way. And you get like a wave going down like that. And it's less efficient at lower velocities because what you're looking for is to get good mixture of air and fuel in the cylinder. Formula One spend a lot of time working on this to enable efficient combustion because it's where the efficiency part of it comes from. If you get parts of the cylinder, bear in mind this is all happening in fractions of a second. If you get parts of the cylinder which are rich, parts of the cylinder that are lean, you're not getting efficient. What you want is a great mixture of air and fuel evenly distributed across the cylinder. That's what the aim of the swirl is, so that we get good mixture. So the axis of mixture is vertical with the cylinder because it's swirling like that. If you don't have a swirl flap, the air comes in that way and you get tumble and the axis of mixture is uh, horizontal. So the mixture of air and fuel is tumbling this way down and bear in mind, the cylinder is this big, you're gonna get perhaps one or two tumbles because of the axis, the radius that it's mixing. And we're getting a bit technical here, but then if you look at the axis and the radius of the curve with a swirl, you're getting more mixing per cylinder, hence greater mixture of air and fuel, hence greater combustion, better efficiency. That's why it's all about. Okay, did I lose anybody? Maybe I did, I'm sorry. But that's what it's all about, that's why they're there. And I don't think BMW are the only manufacturers to do it, by the way, they're just the most notable ones because their first swirl flaps were awful and they had screws screwing little metal plates in which fell off and destroyed engines. My one isn't like that. The N57 has plastic swirl flaps which are one continuous uh, axis of rotation because there's one, you saw me pull it out in the other video, um, they're all controlled by a single servo at the end. And uh, so if we talk about my situation now, hands up, I uh, be honest with you, my, my only knowledge of um, 
the implications of BMW swirl flaps was actually from the previous generation because as we all know I've not owned a BMW before so this is the first time I've actually had hands on with an engine with swirl flaps so I just this you know in my head I thought but swirl flaps equal bad let's just get them out I don't need them they are not that important and the uh, the catastrophe that can occur when they fall to pieces is far worse than the two or three percent efficiency gain by having swirl rather than tumble in my cylinders. That's the way I looked at it. So hands up looking backwards, I actually think the design of the current swirl flaps on the N57 is pretty good. It's actually not too bad and I think it could be fine to be just left alone. I don't think bits are likely to fall off it. However, I don't like having moving parts that close to my intake ports, if I'm completely honest. If we just, just look at the fundamentals of engine design, I'm not that comfortable with it. Um, I don't believe that the efficiency gain is so significant that it warrants the risk of moving parts that close to my intake ports. So the risk is, of course, like with the older engines, that they can crumble, fall apart, and fall into the cylinders and destroy it. I think that's quite unlikely with the N57 engines. Um, but remember this picture, just have a look at this. This was how my um, swirl flaps looked when I took the, the um, intake manifold off first time. The sheer amount of soot and particulates from the crankcase recirculation was horrendous and even at, at wide open the uh, the restriction was significant uh, on all of my swirl flaps so you could just say the answer there is just you've cleaned them you've cleaned them put them back and I could just do that since I've already pulled it out though I'm happy to just block off the hole that was a mistake by the way um, where the uh, the rod is inserted at the end where the servo is that needs to be blocked off and that was my mistake I didn't do that so when I get back um, we'll have a look at that and do it but uh, anyway, there's a bit of theory and uh, you know, history. Uh, just, for, just for historical sake, here's what the original swirl flaps looked like. This is one clean, this is one dirty after it's uh, collected some soot from a while. So you can see there that, uh, I mean, in an industrial sense, you would never put something in a closed system, whether it be a pipeline, a manifold, that has welded or screwed parts that could come off when at pressure and high velocity. You just don't do it in industry. So, you know, it was inevitable that that problem would occur with the first generation of swirl flaps, in my opinion. Um, second generation now, it's a lot better. This is uh, a lot more how you would have uh, a butterfly valve in an industrial application and I'm not too worried about things breaking off it. However, it is plastic. It can you know, suffer from uh, stress, fatigue, heating, cooling. I know it's in the intake manifold, shouldn't really get too hot, but it will. It'll warm and cool and all the rest of it. So um, I'm going to leave mine out and uh, we'll see how that goes. You can always put it back in. I haven't thrown anything away. Never throw bits away. If you're modifying your car, do more research than me first time around so you know what you're doing. And also never throw the bits away as long as they're not broken. Keep them because you may want to put them back. And maybe I will as well. Who knows? So uh, there's swirl flap theory for you. So without further ado, let's get back to it. One, two, three, and we're back. Now it's time to get started on the head 